Mina, konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here, coming at you with Ezra chapter 8. Very interesting little section in here. It starts at verse 21. Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava, that we might humble ourselves before our God, to seek from him the right way for us and our little ones and all our possessions. For I was ashamed to request of the king an escort of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy on the road. Because we had spoken to the king, saying, The hand of our God is upon all those for good who seek him, but his power and his wrath are against all those who forsake him. So we fasted and entreated our God for this, and he answered our prayer. So essentially, they're going from Babylon. I'm going to assume they're still in Babylon um, after Nebuchadnezzar and whatnot. It says the kings of Persia and the Persian Empire took over the Babylonian Empire. So they were in the proximity of Babylon. And so they're traveling from there to Jerusalem. And, you know, well, maybe you don't know, um, but if you're traveling on the roads back in those days, you know, it's not like cars nowadays going 50, 60 miles an hour or like, you know, riding on the subway on the transit where you're just, you know, you, there's a set number of people and you're just going at blistering speeds down the tunnels. Back in the day, you traveled on the road. If you had a mule or a donkey, um, that was great. You didn't. Chances were very good you didn't have a horse unless you were very, very well-to-do, or royalty. And royalty, generally speaking, are well-to-do. So, donkeys and mules, if you're fortunate, sometimes just straight up on foot. So bandits were definitely a thing back in the day, and still are in countries where you simply walk the roads. And, you know, it is, it's terrifying, it's scary. And so Ezra, he says a statement that not a single Christian would ever disagree with. The hand of our God is upon all those for good who seek him, but his power and his wrath are against all those who forsake him. Who among us who calls themselves believers would disagree with that statement? None of us would disagree with that statement. God is for his children, and he's against those who are, well, really he's against those who are not his children, especially against those who forsake him. So, I mean, no Christian's going to disagree with either of those two statements. But because he said it to the king, it was like, I really can't ask for an armed escort, or I kind of gave my God a bad name, and I'm showing I don't actually have faith in him and actually believe what I said. And it's one of those really awkward circumstances where it's like, okay, God, uh, I said this. Please uh, get us there safe. Completely safe. The whole trip. Please. And he did. God sure enough did that, and God is totally capable of doing that at any and all times. Doesn't stop Christians from having rough times, doesn't stop um, Christian homes from having B&Es, doesn't stop Christians from being outright assaulted. Remember Cain and Abel? So it's, and it's this interesting thing, because in the book of Ezra, we don't see any outright miracles. We see the prophets prophesying. We don't hear what their prophecies are, but that's the most supernatural thing we see in the book of Ezra. So... We have a guy who's like, yeah, my God's this good. So no, we don't need no protection. And it just, it makes me wonder. I, the point to this whole thing that I'm talking about here is kind of like, should Ezra have just kept his mouth shut? Should he have put in some qualifiers? He didn't say, it, it's nowhere said in here that God commanded him, go to Jerusalem without an armed guard, I'm going to have an angel army around you. You're good. You know, in fact, I'm telling you, purposefully don't ask the king for soldiers. Purposefully reject them if offered. I got you. I'm going to show my glory in this matter. It's not said that God said that. Maybe he did. We're not given evidence of that. It sounds like to me a case of Ezra biting off a little bit more than he can chew and then God like, I got your back, son. You know, I'll make, I'll prove your words true here. And God can certainly cover his children. I also would not have been ashamed of Ezra one bit if he'd had a, an armed escort or an armed guard with him. Like uh, Christian evangelists who go to other countries, Christian ambassadors and emissaries on official business, sometimes for church, sometimes not for church. I have no problem whatsoever if you have armed guards with you protecting your life. My church actually has armed guards, um, a security ministry, and I have no objection to that whatsoever. There's nothing wrong with us doing what we can do on our part 
to fulfill whatever it is that God's called us to do. And I have absolutely no problem with self-defense. I'm not a pacifist. So it's one of those interesting situations where, yeah, he said that. So he kind of felt like he had to back up his own words. But if he hadn't said it, or if he had been like, you know, God's good. But I think I'll take some of those armed guards. I don't think he would have been in the wrong necessarily to do that. So it's kind of one of those 50-50s, you know, what do you think? And guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below. And to everyone who watched the video, thank you so much for giving me a little bit of your day. I love you, and God bless.